Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody, and a pleasant good day, hockey fans. This is going to be the next hockey video on the Coach of the Year, the John Brophy Award in the ECHL, as it ended up going to a coach that ended up losing in the first round, but did rightfully so still deserve it, in Pyle of the Atlanta Gladiators. Jeff Pyle had his team riding high in the regular season this year, and then for some reason they just kind of fell short and clapped. Well, not really for some reason. Francois Brassard, the guy that I'm going to link the video to, he was one of the award winners of the Nick Fatucci Award, the goalie of the year. A big part of him and having the great saves of him, but also the offense of the Iceman really stepping their ante up, having a good offense in the regular season, and really just getting the ante up even higher in the postseason. As the Gladiators allow 15 goals to only scoring 7, where in the regular season the Gladiators were pretty solid at scoring at 220, but also were not the most keen defensive team at allowing 198 goals. Um, so they were a pretty balanced team there, but they were a team that was able to get a lot of their wins because of their very good offense. And obviously that offense went stagnant for Jeff Pyle in the playoffs, and that was not able to get them to continue in this playoff run. But in the regular season, they deserved all the high praise they can get as Cody Sylvester was one of the best point producers in the league, goal scorers and playmakers. And then you goes to Nesbitt. He was one of the best at the same, but more really, he's one of the best passers in the league, having 33 assists, one of the best assisters. The same goes with Gertler, who is a guy that's able to pass the puck really good, but also scored just missed 20 goals, had 19. This team has really good depth scoring as Neely, and Roy also had over 20 goals. They have a guy in Shin that had 13 goals. So they spread their wealth, basically, in their scoring. That's what the Gladiators were able to do for Jeff Pyle this season. Of uh, Tabatas, uh, I always mispronounce his name, but he's one of the better passing point producing defensemen. Davison is as well. Velio is. Uh, Bernard is as well. So they got some guys that, well, Bernard's more of a defensive guy, and so is Graves and Yoder, but they have guys that are good on the defensive, in the defensive zone, defensemen, and then obviously also have guys that are good in the offensive zone, as I just named as well, in Tabata, Derek, and then Davison, and then Velio, and then Bernard, Yoder, and Graves are good in the defensive zone. So they got a good mix that he was able to put together there, Jeff Pyle. Kirk McDonald, also for my Reading Royals fan, did come in second here, also with Nick, <clears throat> um, also with Nick, our former assistant coach, Nick Luco, who was up there as well for the Jacksonville Iceman, so the guy that beat Jeff Pyle in the first round came uh, behind him in this award, but also, again, I think Pyle really deserved this, because he had one of the more spaced out, high-powered offenses that was not necessarily carried yes you had a couple guys in Sylvester and Nesbitt that were able to do just amazing but then you had Kurtler, Neely, uh, Pellick, uh, Roy and others that were able to just fill in your scoring and have very good depth scoring it's just that depth scoring wasn't able to come to fruition in the playoffs and that's kind of what bit them in the ass but when it comes to um, us looking at that now to see what truthfully uh, guys still did in the playoffs, Sylvester and Shin did really well, but as I said, their depth scoring, Roy, Holscher, they had two points in that spit, but you weren't able to get anything out of much of Kurtler at all, uh, Neely, you weren't able to get anything out of, so when some of your guys that were really getting it going for you in the regular season struggle, and then Nell struggles in net, uh, that's not really going to help you whatsoever when you have your net minder struggle bunnying and you have the depth scores of your team struggle bunnying. So that would be why I would say the Atlanta Gladiators <clears throat> were not able to continue past the first round of their playoff run. But Jeff Pyle, because of all the compliments I said towards his team, because of the great offensive depth and also the fact that they formed a good defensive defenseman in their bottom three of their defense and then their top three is very good offensive, having a good mix there. Their goaltending was solid in the regular season, not so much in the playoffs. He did deserve the coach of the year. Obviously, it's just an odd coincidence that the guy that was behind him, as well as Kirk McDonald, the Reading Royals coach, was behind him, is Nick Luco, who ended up beating him in the first round. But this has been a video on Jeff. <clears throat> Excuse me. This has been a video on Jeff. <clears throat> uh, as I'm blanking on his latest name right now, Jeff Pyle winning the coach of the year. I'm sorry, I'm not always the best with the coaches' names. I'm best with knowing their systems. 
remembering all their names because of how I cover the NHL, ECHL, and AHL. Sometimes it gets locked up in my head. But Jeff Pyle, he runs a very good offensive system, and I think he deserves the praise for that because his offensive system isn't one of those that makes your defense suck either. He has a good mix system, and I think that makes an interesting system to watch. I do think they should try to get a little bit sharper overall consistent net mining next year in Atlanta, and that would be something to look for. But Jeff Pyle definitely deserves the Coach of the Year and the John Brophy Award. Peace, everybody. Stay safe. Please subscribe down below or up above with the easiest wizard to keep the channel growing to 230 or more by the end of April. Have a great, safe, pleasant day, everybody, and enjoy the rest of the Kelly Cup playoffs for all those fans of other teams that I know also tend to check out this video. Peace out, everybody.